This is a short revision video about the demand in a market section from the AQA AS level economics unit 1 which is markets and market failure. The demand section is basically really basic here and later on we come into more and more detail but this is just the basics of demand. Here are some very boring yet alas necessary definitions. So demand is the amount that consumers are willing and able to buy at each given price. So say when cameras are priced at £120, there is 120,000 people that want to buy them. Demand for cameras at £120 is 120,000. Effective demand is demand supported by the ability to pay for a good or service. So for example, I might want a Ferrari and to go to Barbados, I don't even know if it's nice in Barbados, but apparently it is. So say, I mean, I want all that, but it's not effective because I am totally broke. So as much as I might want it, and be willing to have it, it's not effective demand, because I can't get it. And market demand, which is actually quite similar to just demand, it's the total demand in the market for a good at each given price. So it's basically the sum of all the individual's demand. So say we lived on a small island where there was just me and you, and some random guy selling books, and I demanded four books when they're priced at three pounds, and you demanded two books when they're priced at three pounds. Total market demand is Six, six books at three pounds. That would be a really boring island, but still. And moving on now to the demand curve. For those of you who have never seen one before, there is one in the bottom corner there. And I mean, it's quite exciting the first time you see it, but you see it again and again and again. You're gonna see this curve so many times. It's like the center of economics, plus a bit of supply and then a few other curves. But that curve is life. So one question you might be asking yourself is, why does it slope downwards? And you're probably not asking yourself that, but say you were, this is why. Consumers want to maximise the benefit they can get from buying goods and services with their limited income. And say there's an expensive item, a consumer has to give up more for this expensive item. So expensive items have got a higher opportunity cost. So people think, oh, I might not get that expensive item because I can get lots of cheaper items and for the same price, basically and more people can afford to buy cheaper items. So the demand for them, the market demand is much greater. To add to this, as we buy more of something, the benefit of buying it decreases. For example, if there's a chocolate bar, the first chocolate bar you get, and say it's a pound, you eat it, delicious. Second one you get, maybe you're still prepared to pay a pound. Not so nice, and after that you're not prepared to pay as much. So as the quantity you demand increases, that's along the x-axis, price you're prepared to pay on the y-axis decreases, hence it slopes downwards the curve. Woo! You only move along the demand curve if there is a change in price, because demand will change with price. Unless you've got something that is perfectly demand inelastic, in which case the change in price will not affect the quantity demanded at all, but we will come to that later. So say the price rises, less people can afford the good, less people want to buy the good at that price, so demand falls, which means there is a contraction of the demand curve, so we're moving up it in the direction of the arrow on the screen there. I love how I'm pointing at the screen as if somehow you can see me pointing at the arrow on the screen. Really stupid. But say there is a fall in price, that means that more people can afford the good. More people think, oh, that good's not too expensive, I think I'll buy that. So demand rises, woo! Which means there is a extension in demand. So we're moving down and along the demand curve. So we've done movement along the demand curve, now we're going to do factors which totally shift the demand curve, either right or left. A right shift in demand means that demand totally increases for all given prices, whilst a left shift in demand means that demand falls at all given prices. There are lots of factors that can cause the demand curve to shift, such as income, advertising, substitutes, complementary goods, fashion, quality, season, laws and expectations. So I'm just going to run through them and tell you a bit about them. A normal good is a good for which demand rises as incomes rise. So for normal goods, a rise in income will cause there to be a right shift in the demand curve, whilst a fall in income will cause there to be a left shift in the demand curve. An example of a good like this might be a camera. I keep using cameras just because I've got one on the desk. I'm also holding it at the moment, feeling it. 
I wasn't feeling it until this moment and run a missing here, stroking my camera. But yeah, that's why I keep talking about cameras. Anyway, you don't really care about that. So for cameras, as incomes rise, more people can afford cameras, more people might want to take up the hobby of cameraing, photo taking, that might be the proper name, photography, that's the one. And so there's greater demand for cameras. And then you get inferior goods, and inferior goods are goods for which there's a rise in demand as income falls. So, for example, buses, like transport on buses. When incomes fall, less people can afford to own cars, pay all the car taxi stuff. Um, what else do you do with cars? Petrol, that's quite expensive. So, instead, they get the bus. So, when incomes fall, demand for buses goes up because buses are inferior goods, and this is true for all inferior goods. So as income fall, inferior goods, demand for them rises. So there's a right shift in demand curve. Moving on now to advertising. When you see an advert, you think, wow, I want that. So if you increase your advertising as a company, more people see your product and think, wow, I want that. And so demand for your product goes up. So if there's an increase in advertising for any product, there is an increase in demand and thus a right shift in the demand curve. Substitutes are competing goods which can be used as an alternative. So, for example, a substitute for a can of Heinz baked beans might be a can of Morrison's own baked beans. Yum yum. And say I'm Morrison's and someone else is Heinz and I put my price up, it means that demand for Heinz baked beans is going to go up because my good is more expensive so less people want it and people might still want their baked beans and they'll buy Heinz baked beans instead. Though obviously with Heinz baked beans it's a bit confusing because Heinz is quite a strong brand so people probably wouldn't go for Morrison's anyway. But we'll do more about that later when we do cross price elasticity of demand and stuff. Moving on now to complementary products which are goods that are consumed together like shampoo and conditioner, milk and whatever you have with milk. I don't know, what, what are two com like, complementary goods? I'm trying to think of some more examples. iPod and headphones. So say the price of a complementary falls. So say with iPod and headphones, the price of the iPod falls. I'm more likely to want to buy the iPod, for obvious reasons, because there's been a extension in demand. And then, because I've got the iPod, I need headphones. Headphones are notorious for breaking a lot, so I'll, I'll buy quite a lot of them, because I've got my iPod now, which before I didn't have an iPod. Now I've got an iPod, I'm going to need to buy headphones probably a couple of pairs every few months. So demand for headphones will increase as well. So when the price of a complementary good to the original good falls, there's an increase in demand for the original good, and thus a right shift of the demand curve. Fashion. Da -da -da -da, jazz hands. Say a good becomes fashionable, so everyone wants it, everyone might want the latest iPhone case, Flappy Bird, that's free, but say it was expensive and you had to pay for it, then, you know, demand for that good increases with fashion because everyone's got it, so more people get churned up in the whole, I don't know, craziness trying to buy this good. So if the good becomes fashionable, there's an increase in demand and a right shift of the demand curve. You're probably getting really fed up with me saying increase in demand, right shift of the demand curve, but in the exam you have to write that because it's worth marks, and then you'd write that it was from D1 to D2, that sort of thing. Quality. Say there was an iPod and it had only 8 megabytes of data, maybe the sound wasn't that great, I might look at it and think, meh, I didn't really demand that. But they sent, then suddenly it was like 125 megabytes, gigabytes, I don't know, whatever you have, that sort of thing. Data, fantastic sound. 3D display, I might think, wow, I really want that. My iPod's broken, so I'll take any iPod at the moment. Anyway, yeah, sorry. You think, wow, I really want that. Now I'm more likely to demand it. The whole market is going to act like this. They're all going to act together. And they'll think, wow, we all want this. And so there's going to be an increase in demand and thus a right shift of the demand curve with a rise in quality. When goods are in season, they're demanded more. So, for example, woolen hats. Who wants a woolly hat in summer? I mean, they look quite nice, they're quite comfy, but you will boil to death. Whilst in winter, keep you snug, keep you warm, stop you from getting a head cold or whatever you might get. They're just perfect. So people want them more, demand goes up, right shift and demand curve. Laws. Now, it's easiest to do it the other way around for laws. So, alas, a left shift. Shock horror, something new here. 
Say there's a law which makes consumption of a particular good difficult. I mean, the obvious example is cigarettes. I think it's legal to smoke them inside a public building or whatever the law is. People are less likely to demand the good, so cigarettes. People think, oh, I can't smoke them anywhere, why do I want them? I mean, obviously, cigarettes are habit-forming good, so it's a bit different because you get hooked. But anyway, let's ignore that for now. If cigarettes are hard to consume, people might think more, they might want to quit it more, so demand just drops. Demand plummets. So that's a left shift of the demand curve. Last item on the list. Woo! Expectations. If people think that the prices are going to rise, then they're going to buy it. If they think it's going to be inflation, they're going to buy products now before the prices get higher. So if people are thinking in their heads, oh, there's going to be inflation quite soon, they'll buy a lot, and so there'll be a total right shift of demand for all the goods for which ex inflation is expected to occur on them. And obviously if people think, oh, there's going to be deinflation and prices are all going to fall, they will wait, they're going to hold off their demand, so they're going to be a left shift of the demand curve because people are just going to wait for the prices to get there a little bit lower and then they'll buy them. Obviously for all of the things I've just done, there's an inverse, so I've mainly done the right shift, except for the last couple I've done the left shift. But for all of the ones with the right shift, there's also the chance of a left shift. So for example, if goods become unfashionable, left shift. If the price of substitutes falls, left shift, so on and so forth. But as long as you can know it one way, you'll know it the other way as well, because obviously the opposite is going to be the case. There are two main types of demand that you need to know about, other than just normal demand, these like definitions. And these, they come up in multiple choice all the time, so just learn them. Composite demand and derived demand. I've got no idea how you pronounce composite, composite or composite. Composite sounds nice. Sorry, I'm being stupid. So composite demand is when a good is demanded for more than one purpose. For example, um, I'm trying to think of something here. Gosh, difficult. Right, paper. Say paper is needed for making books and making just normal writing paper, lined paper. Say suddenly people really want to read, so there's an increased demand for the purpose of books. It means that the supply of paper is reduced for the other purpose, which is writing paper. And if supply falls, it means it's a higher price for writing paper. So the basic principle that you need to understand is that if there's an increased demand for one purpose of the good, there's decreased supply for the other purpose of the good, which leads to higher prices for the other good. And derived demand, yeah. Derived demand is when demand for one good or service comes from the demand for another good or service. For example, the demand for ice cream men comes from the demand for ice cream. And the demand for... CD players comes from the demand for CDs. Obviously derived demand is quite similar to complementary products. I mean the, the difference is that for complementary products they are consumed together. You have both of them. And derived demand, you, you only demand the second one because you demand the first one. Though I suppose in my example earlier of complementary products I said iPod and headphones because you use them together. I mean one without the other is pointless. But it could also be drive demand for that one because the demand for headphones comes from the demand for an iPod. And that is the end of the revision video on demand. So we have our celebratory balloons. Sorry if I sounded half bored to death whilst doing that. I've got a bit of sore throat, so I'm a bit raspy. You know, I've got a bit of sore throat. Sometimes people ask me whether I'm a boy or a girl. Like, I mean, I thought it was pretty obvious, especially from the name of my channel. Anyway, hope this helped and that you have a lovely day.